jujitsuers, today we're looking at the mounted gogo plata. It's actually a lot easier than you might think it is to pull off when you're rolling. In addition to the gogo, I've got some alternate submissions from that same position, as well as a nice yoga routine that can keep you all bendy and stuff. Check it out. I'll do gogo plata from mount, and this uh, that position is really effective when you have, of course, a, a lot of flexibility, but. Special when your opponent try to do upa, exactly that position. I have a chance. First, I have to break his grip. If you try to one, I give one example. If you try to do upa to that side, post my hand, of course, and the other hand, I have to break his grip. Look, straight my leg in. When I, I break his grip, I put my body to that side, it's over. I have the goggle plot here, what I mean? I let go, grab my shin, and pass here. Most of the time, he don't like to try to flat his body on the mat. Why? If you go this way, I have the omoplata. And then he try to escape his arm, but that position doesn't work. He can escape, because look, when I pass my foot here and control, I use my hook for control and use my other hand, go behind, grab my toes and squeeze. Blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I have a, a lot of option here. When I pass my leg here, look, if I grab, grab the other arm, I have arm bar that side too. But the idea, what, what I have to do in that situation, I don't need to lose my focus and grab the other arm. It's way better, I focus with that arm. And then it's too easy for a dugogo plata or go to another position. I pass like this, look. My other leg here, it looks like difficult, but it's not difficult. If I pass my leg over his face and put my hooks up this way, and then it's really hard for his skate. I keep control his arm, and I have a lot of variation. Or that one, or gogo plata, or the same position here, I grab and go to, to the other side, the opposite side. When you more go to that side, it's worse for him, shoulder lock. And it's hard, if you try to escape that side, try to roll the other side, here. I have the other plan. All right, that was a bunch of submissions. So let's go over them together real quick, including how to get there in the first place. First, you're starting in the mount. If your opponent grabs your belt or gi and tries to bridge, you post on the mat. Next, you break the grip. Grab your foot and feed your instep in front of your opponent's face. If you're flexible and coordinated enough, you can just step your foot around into that position. If your opponent rolls into you at this point, they're pretty much rolling right into an omoplata. But most of the time, your opponent will flatten their back to the mat. To secure the gogo plata, feed your arm under your opponent's head and grab your toes. Pushing on your heel creates additional pressure. Another option is to grab the sleeve of the far arm and pull it across towards you for an armbar. If you'd rather attack the near side arm, you can step your foot over and get the armbar that way. Another variation is to shift your hips over a bit and sit for a shoulder lock. And lastly, if your opponent tries to turn away and roll out, the omoplata is right there on a silver platter for you. I know what a few of you might be thinking. This video is a mounted gogo plata and my last video showed you some yoga hip opener exercises. And some of you might be saying, but I'm not flexible enough for all that nonsense. I'll let my buddy Kenya respond to that. That's why you need yoga. 
you do yoga because you want to get more flexible. And also, a lot of guys saying that this to me here at the academy. Oh, I'm not flexible to do yoga. So that's why you need yoga. You know, because like yoga, as I said, with vinyasa flow, we match breath with movement. So we're going to learn how to stretch. At the same time, be conscious, be conscious of your body, your breath, and your movement. So that's why you need yoga. <laughs> So to get you started, here's a short yoga sequence to loosen you up. So here we stand in Tadasana, it's a mountain pose. My legs are engaged, my belly in, my table is towards the floor. Here, here. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward with a flat back. Inhale, hands on your shins to lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward, bend your knees and step your right leg back. Drop your knees, untuck your toes, inhale, reach your arms up, Anjanayasana. From here, put your belly in and up, tailbone towards the floor. I'm opening my hip flexors here. When I have this touch, I go a little forward. Inhale here, exhale, fold forward, tuck my toes, go back to plank position. In plank position, I have my belly in and up, I'm lengthening here, inhale, I'm going to switch forward, go halfway down, untuck my toes, up and facing dog. My legs are engaged here, inhale, exhale, down facing dog. From down facing dog, I spread my fingers, I slide my biceps forward and my triceps back. I put my belly in, my legs are engaged here, inhale, lift my right back up and step between my hands. I go to my fingertips, my belly in and up, my hip flex from my left leg, it's working again. So inhale here, lower my knees, untuck my toes, reach my arms up, relax my shoulders, belly in and up, tables towards my hips. Inhale here, you can go a little forward, Anjanasana, you can touch your palms, Exhale, frame my foot with my hand, tuck my toes, put my, little, my, little, my fingertips forward, halfway to the ceiling, step close, inhale, hands on my shins to lengthen the spine, I roll my shoulder blades forward, my back wrist, inhale, exhale, put my belly in and up, and fold forward again. Inhale with a flat back and strong legs, reach my arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Usually we do the other side, so we just do the right side now. So we just stay here, close your eyes, and focus. I think if you do yoga, of course as much as you can, it's better for you. But if we stretch every day, so flexibility comes with time. You know, you can, you're not gonna do yoga and you're gonna touch your feet right away. So, if you do at least like twice a week, it's a good start for you. And usually when we start doing yoga, you wanna do more and more and more. So, you can start with twice a week. If it's okay for you, you can start like that. Twice a week, I think it's a good number to start. And then after that, you wanna do more. So, in yoga, in yoga, if you have a good teacher, they can adapt your practice to the injury you have. So let's say you have a, back, lower back, uh, a bad lower back injury or something. So we can work on that, you know, we're gonna work a lot on your core. If you get a strength in your core, your lower back is gonna relieve. You know, it's gonna be less pain in your So let's say you have a shoulder, a tight shoulder. We can always adapt for your body. So everyone has a different types of body, you know, so we can adjust the yoga practice to your body. So that is the greatest thing in yoga. Everyone can do yoga. <laughs> Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next videos. In the meantime, why don't you go check out one of these fine videos or head over to bjjtrainingjournal.com and grab a free online training journal and training tool for grappling. Train smart and I'll see you in the next video.